Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Compex number C8052. The part number would be then KAC415 and a 14A finish. This is a cam lock is what it is. It's a little bit of a less common cam lock, most certainly a less common cam lock because it's for a very thin material. It's a very short length. This is the body of the cam lock or the housing of the cylinder and I have one here with all of the components removed and let's start with the business end of it. It would be the cylinder. This is what's called a disc or a wafer. I would call it a disc tumbler uh, cylinder. Sometimes people might refer to these discs as wafers uh, and they, I, I, I'm not a locksmith but I believe that you could certainly call them wafers. Schlage has, has certainly had might still have a wafer lock, their Schlage wafer lock, and the wafers are not unlike what's in here. This would be probably called a disc tumbler, though. There are different tumbler types, lever tumbler, disc tumbler, and pin tumbler. Pin tumbler is the very common style today, although disc tumbler is very common in locks that generally require less security, most certainly, um, less potential overall keying changes. Uh, of our less expensive construction and design. Lever tumbler locks still exist. You might encounter those as a single or maybe a double lever tumbler lock in a, um, you know, maybe a, um, a lock that would go in, uh, in furniture or maybe a foot case, uh, you know, a, a, a trunk sort of lock. And you'd know a lever tumbler because it would have what we would commonly call a skeleton key, which would be known as a bit key or a barrel key. Uh, yeah, it would be the other tumbler. Anyway, this is a disc tumbler. And these are really neat little designs. There are five tumblers inside of here. And when the key is inserted... It has cuts on it that look like it could be a pin tumbler, but inside of these discs, there are rectangular preparations. They're not quite rectangular, but they're, for all intents and purposes, rectangular with a step in them. And the depth of the step is how deep that step goes is directly related to the cut on the key, so that when you insert the key, you've got one, two, three, let's see here now, one, two, three, four... Oh, I see. One is up here, not even cut. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like you might have four different depths of cuts. So two of these disc tumblers would have that step inside of it at the same distance measured from the bottom. So that when you insert the key, those cuts and those steps, those cuts and those steps that are in the disc tumblers will draw all of those tumblers to flush with the body, just like a curd. And when the tumblers are flush with the body, it will then be permitted to rotate. Only when the only when the disc wafers, or pardon me, the disc tumblers are um, flush, will it actually then rotate. Without them being flush, they will rest inside of one of these um, milling grooves that are inside of the lock body itself. Okay, into the housing. So obviously you get the cylinder, you get two original keys. The uh, 346 in the part number is the key number. This client ordered four cylinders, two short ones like the 8052, two longer ones like the 8053. They're all 346, so all four of them are keyed alike. So that's nice and convenient. Yikes. Original um, Compex equipment, very high quality. You get the housing as we mentioned earlier we're going to talk about the material thickness now with all of this and we'll use all of this as a prop to move forward you're going to get a bezel for the cylinder you would most likely certainly use that you don't have to but you certainly would typically see it you're then going to get a nut with prongs that will be used on wood applications only so that when you install that, those prongs are going to bite into the back of the wood, and because it has what's called a double D prep, the cylinder body won't rotate. Okay, Then you'll have the nut that will hold everything on. That just gets threaded on. At that point, you then have your... You have two tailpieces or cams. 
One is this straight cam. The other is this offset cam. You can install the offset cam either offset to this side or offset to this side. Doesn't really matter. You can install them vertical, horizontal. However, whatever orientation you require, you'll be able to install those. And then there is also this split washer that's included. I don't, this is the first lock I've seen this in. It could only really be installed on the back of the tail of, of the back of the spindle. Your tailpiece would come on, okay, at that point. Yeah, use it or don't. Use it if you need to. Uh, then you'll have the nut that will hold all of that on. That's a threaded portion right there. Then you'll have these small spacers that can insert, uh, being of different thicknesses, they can insert into the small holes that are drilled in the cams to account for any play that you'd like to take up. So let's measure these cams. So from the center of the body to the end of the cam, the straight cam is about an inch and a half, I would say that's supposed to be. The offset style appears to be about inch and three sixteenths. This is going to have an offset of, looks like it's about, it's supposed to be three eighths would be my guess. Okay, so now uh, we've gone over a review of what is in the package. Let's switch to the screen view where we can take a look at the supporting documentation of this cylinder and its sister products. Okay, so here is the item that we are looking at. Okay, just a stock generic image. This would be the item here that we're looking at. doesn't have this sort of shrouded... Uh, tapered feature to the head of the cylinder housing. Uh, extended description information here. Each lock comes with a stop washer which allows the cam to turn 90 degree. There is no stop washer with this lock at all. A stop washer goes on the back of the unit and literally limits the rotation to 90 degree clockwise and then back counterclockwise 90 degree. This is accomplished by the uh, the by the milling cuts on the inside of the housing. That's what allows it to turn 90 degree in one direction. Um, well, it, it's a feature on the inside of the cylinder housing. This can work on, le work on left or right hand doors. Cams included for uh, lift or overlay construction. We'll touch on that in a moment. Overlay application. So what, okay, so let's let's dive into this. Cams for lift or overlay, you have an inch and a half straight, and then you have an inch and an eighth extension with an 11 30 seconds offset. I called it as 3 eighths. For overlay application, the combined thickness of front and frame cannot exceed the cylinder length. To accommodate an overlay construction using a three quarter inch front and frame, use the 52 lock and the 7014 cam, just as an example. We'll touch on the catalog in a moment, but this is, what they're driving at. You know, so when you're doing an overlay uh, or a partial or what they call a lift overlay, <clears throat> you've got overlay, partial overlay, and then flush. You have to be mindful of what your measurement is. You know the length of the body, and they're gonna, I'm gonna tell you the max thickness for the cylinder length in a moment, and then you know the offset from here to here, okay? So now you can judge what, if, which cam would be appropriate. For your application. If you're going into wood, they'll want a three quarter inch hole. And if you're going into steel, you would use this double D prep. And they actually, there are tools made for a die set that you would use to create a double D prep in a steel cabinet. We sell those. So if you have a need for that, reach out to us. And these are, dimensions are from the center, as I had said earlier, inch and a half for the straight. I said an inch and three sixteenths earlier, it's inch and an eighth. Okay. Now, Moving on, the key, the key pull position is in both the locked and unlocked position, so be mindful of that. It does come with two keys. Your spur washer, I had called it, rather than a prong uh, washer or whatever I said. Trim washer is the bezel in the front, mounting nut and two cams. They don't ma mention that split um, locking washer. and I've, I, Admittedly, I've not seen that in the past, but that's the only place it could be installed. 
unassembled removal core versions of this lock are available. You could refer to that in the manufacturer's catalog. I'll show you where to find that. The factory can certainly do keying however you might like. Um, key different, key to like, master keyed, and key different. Cylinder length is 5 8 Max material thickness is 15 64 So that is really thin material. I mean, 15 64 One divided by 64 times 15. That's 0.234 inch. So just shy on a quarter inch. Very, very thin material. Bright nickel. Now that's buried in the part number here, 14A. Polished nickel or bright nickel. That's what the 14A refers to. Your key number, and you can do different key numbers. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And we're going to talk more about that in a moment right now. There's also a link below this video to a document called Product Brochure. And here it is. <clears throat> Much of this information we've already looked at. But we're looking at the 8052 lock in a 14A finish, not in a 3 finish, which would be brass. Cylinder length is 5 8 Max material thickness is 15 64 and also down below, they talk about different key codes that can be done. Um, you'll be able to do all sorts of codes uh, on these, meaning just the bidding, uh, you know, the, the code of the key, which relates to the cuts on the key. So it's a indirect code. You know, C346 means a particular bidding or cut on the key blank itself. And speaking of the key blank, they do have the key blank number here, D8785. You can order those key blanks separately. Uh, or have the factory cut you blanks um, if you need to provide more than just two keys per cylinder, which would be very common. Now, the other cylinder lengths and maximum material thicknesses are also listed in these two columns here. Okay. Um, all of the information here that we've discussed would be covering it over uh, again. You can install this in, in left hand or right hand doors. Um, you know, the position of the, uh, the tailpiece can be however you like it. Uh, you know, depending on, you know, assuming this is a drawer, you probably have your tailpiece in the vertical position and unlocked to the side. But again, your key pole position, meaning your key can be removed in either orientation. They do have key retaining options in their catalog. Uh, so this one page is just a one page accommodation of this one lock. Now to see the balance of the material, the link here to the manufacturer's page will allow you to review not only all of the Compax products we sell, but also a link to the website as well as, well as a link to the catalog. And that catalog is where you will be able to do a deep dive on all of the other peripheral uh, items as it relates to this cylinder. So I just did a find function on my keyboard for 8052 and immediately got to the same page that we were just on. So from here you'll be able to let's say take a look at that D8785 if you want to see that key blank only you can search for that and you will eventually find it it's just there's a lot of matches for it naturally. The key blank is probably closer in the back of the catalog. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it appears to be on maybe the 24th page of the document. Let's see, 8785. Okay. Apparently that is their C keyway, so they have different broachings that occur in the cylinders. That's a C keyway. Five pin disc tumbler system. Now when we get back to our C8052, uh, we can also look at the other cams that are available. I don't immediately see a page where they're referenced. But I know, I happen to know that as we scroll. They had mentioned a lock washer, by the way. That's what a lock washer looks like. 90 degree rotation, 180 degree rotation. You can place those. They stack on the back of the body of the cylinder. Um, as we scroll through, we're going to get to where we can find all of those cams. 
Lots of them, okay? A lot of options here. So you can really determine what would be the most appropriate uh, cam for your application. And while it's not often that we have unusual length straight cams or very deep offset offset cams, they do happen and they are available. And they're all here for your review. So this catalog is very handy because it's a deep dive into the world, all, the world of all things compacts. And I can tell you that I have spoken to the factory a handful of times when it comes to either technical support or attempting to determine whether or not they can accommodate a special application. And they are very, very uh, agreeable folk. They are professional, prompt, reliable, predictable. They possess an expert level command over the subject matter. And to the three or four, two or three people I've spoken to in the last so many years, to them I say thank you very much. Let's wrap up this video on camera. So the question really becomes is where would you use such a short cam lock? You know, anything that's a very thin wall of material, you know, anything of that nature. Uh, I do not know the application that this client is using this in, but I know that they are testing the two different lengths because that's what we're supplying them. Uh, and then they'll make their determination. The, requir the requirements to me was a non-Asian imported lock that was of high quality, that would be available in abundance uh, and was supported by an exceptional company uh, when it comes to technical support and quality. And uh, while Compax isn't the only people who meet that criteria, they are a quite exceptional uh, choice when it comes to their product. Uh, so there you go. Okay. If you have any questions on the Compax, this is their C8052, short little uh, little cam lock, or any other Comp X product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.